We have been looking at ratios. Today we're going to be looking at rates, which basically work the same way as ratios. The only difference is you're talking about different units. Let me just show you what I mean here. If we've got an example like a car travels at 60 kilometers per hour and we want to then know about how far it travels in five hours, etc., etc., what we're dealing with, the 60 kilometers per hour is a rate. So 60 kilometers per hour. What does that mean? 60 kilometers per hour means that the car travels 60 kilometers in every one hour. And we can kind of write that in the same way we've been writing ratios. We can say that what you're seeing is that for every one hour that happens, the car travels 60 kilometers. So if two hours happens, you're going to get two lots of 60 kilometers. If three hours happens, you're going to get three lots of 60 kilometers. So it works in exactly the same way we've been seeing ratios work. So we can do apply exactly the same principles. If we want to answer that first question, how far will it travel in five hours? What we see is that we have got five lots of one hour, so in that time, because each hour it travels 60 kilometers, you're going to have five lots of 60 kilometers, which is 300 kilometers. And we can go the other way too. If we know that it's traveled 420 kilometers and we want to know how long that took, well, what we've got to do is we've got to see, well, what did we multiply by to get from 60 to 420? We can work this out by saying 420 divided by 60, and we'll see we get the answer to that is 7. And so what we've done is we've multiplied 60 by 7 to get to 420, so we've got to multiply the 1 hour by 7, and we'll get 7 hours here as our answer. Okay. The important thing with rate is to make sure we always are keeping everything in the same units. Let me show you what I mean. If we've got this example, a car traveling at 90 kilometers per hour, we know that what we've got is for every 90 for every hour we drive, we drive 90 kilometers, right? So we can write it like that. And then the question is, how far will it travel in 20 minutes? Now, here is our problem, right? There it is. The rate's given in kilometers per hour, and the question asks us what's happening in 20 minutes. And we can't mix those two. So what we've got to do is convert everything to the same unit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn 20 minutes into a time in hours. We know that 20 minutes, well, how many minutes are there in an hour? There's 60, right? So we've just got 20 out of the total of the 60 minutes. And so if we just um, simplify that fraction, we get 2 over 6, which is 1 third. So we've got 20 minutes is just a third of an hour. So then our question becomes nice and easy. What we're asking is, how far will it travel in a third of an hour? What have we done? We've multiplied here by a third. So we must multiply there by a third, 90 times by 1 over 3, well it's 90 over 1 times 1 over 3, we can simplify and we'll get 30 over 1, which is just 30 kilometers. Okay, I want you to try the next one. A car travels at 80 kilometers per hour, how far will it travel in? 45 minutes. Pause the video now and try this in your homework books. Okay, so you had 80 kilometers in one hour. And you want to know what's happening in 45 minutes, or you need to turn 45 minutes into a time in hours. So you say you've got 45 out of the 60 minutes. And so we simplify this fraction. Let's divide top by 15, we get 3. Bottom by 15, we get 4. So we know this is 3 quarters. So we get 3 quarters of an hour. And so what have we done? Well, we've multiplied here by 3 quarters, so we need to multiply there by 3 quarters. So what is 80 multiplied by 3 quarters? Well, it's 80 over 1 times 3 over 4. We can cancel. 
and we get 20 times 3, which is 60. So we get 60 kilometers as our answer. Another place where rates come up very commonly is in the whole idea of an exchange rate. Different countries around the world use different currencies, in other words, different types of money. So, for example, if you were in the United States of America and you were buying things, you would be using dollars, right? Here's a picture of a dollar. This is the money you would be using if you were in the United States of America. Now, how much each of the currencies, dollars, rands, pounds, whatever, are worth, changes all the time, and they change relative to each other. So that's why we have what we call an exchange rate. That tells you how much each type of money is worth in comparison to another. So, for example, we could say the exchange rate between the rand and the US dollar is 11 rand 50 is equal to one dollar. What that means is if you are going to go to America and you want to get some dollars so you have money there, for each dollar you want to buy, you have to pay 11 rand 50. So if you wanted to buy two dollars, then you'd have to hand over two lots of 11 rand 50. If you want to buy three dollars, you'd have to hand over three lots of 11 rand 50. If you want to buy a hundred dollars, you'd have to hand over a hundred lots of 11 rand 50. So you can see that these old exchange rates work very similarly to everything we've been doing with ratio and rates up until now. So I'm putting the money aside. Let's go ahead and do some calculations. So we can write this like if we know the 11 Rand 50 is equal to $1, we can write it in the way we always have been. 11 Rand 50 to $1. Now we can answer our questions in the same way we always have. If you want $20, well, what have you done? You have said you want 20 lots of $1, so you've got to hand over 20 lots of 11 Rand 50. So 20 lots of 11 Rand 50, let's just have a look at how to do this. 11 Rand 50 multiplied by 20 is going to be the same as 115,0 multiplied by 2, which is going to be the same as 230. So that's going to be 230 Rand. So I have to hand over 230 Rand in order to get $20. Now, the next question is actually going to be quite a bit more complicated to figure out. Because what they're asking me there is how many dollars will I get for 500 Rand? So let's just start this calculation. Let's see what we've got here. We know that for each $1, it's going to take 11 Rand 50. But now we want to get to 500. Now I don't know about you, but I can't figure out immediately how to get from 1150 to 500. What have I multiplied by? I don't know. And so what I'm going to do is just take it one step, put one step in the middle, which will make it a whole lot easier. And what I can do is I can say, look, what will be easy is if I can figure out what one rand is worth. If I can figure out what one rand is worth, then it'll be very easy to get 500 rand because I'll just multiply by 500. So how do I get what one rand is worth? Well, what did I do from 11 rand 50 to get to one rand? I had to divide by 11 rand 50. So what must I do on this side? I need to divide by 11 50. Now, I'm not going to bother to calculate the answer just yet, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this is just, I take the 1 and I divide it by 11 Rand 50. Then, to get to the 500, I had to multiply here by 500, so I must also multiply on this side by 500. And so I get here 500 over 11, 
And that's the answer, right? Except obviously we don't like to see answers written like that. So at this point, I'm just going to go to my calculator and I'm going to calculate 500 divided by 11.5 and I will get the answer there that from my calculator is 43,48. That idea of if it gets complicated to get straight to the answer of going through the one is an important one and you'll use it often when you're dealing with rates or ratios. So let's have a look at another example. If we've got 24 apples costing 36 Rand, right? And I want to give 10 of them to my sister and I need to know how much to charge her. I don't want to make a profit. I just want her to pay the same amount that they're worth. Um, I've got to go from... 24 apples, I've got to figure out 10, right? And I can't easily see what have I divided by whatever from to get from 24 to 10. So I'm going to use that idea. If it's difficult to see what I've divided by, I'm going to use the idea of going to 1 first. Because it's always easy to see that what I've done to get from 24 to 1 is I've just divided by 24. And so here, I'm just going to divide by 24. And so what I'll get is 36 over 24. And then what do I do to get up to the 10? Well, I've multiplied here by 10. So I'll multiply here by 10. And what I'll get is 36 times 10 over 24. And there's my answer, except obviously I want to write that a bit better. I want to actually get to the end of the calculation. 36 times 10 is 360. 360 over 24. Well, I can see I can divide both of these by 12. So I'll get 2 here and I'll get 30 here because 3 12s are 36. And then 2 into 30 is 15. So this answer here is 15 and I'm done.